I, at least, and I'm sure Sam as well, have never suggested that religion is the only source of evil. If I go back to what Dr. Woodward was saying, saying that we haven't done the, the empirical correlation of the variation in um, horrible things that happen correlated with religion. Well, of course there are other variables. What on earth do you expect? There are lots of other, other variables, and nobody's denying that. The thing about the Quran is that it's one of the variables. The thing about religion is that it's one of the, of the variables. That's all that anyone is claiming. In the particular case of looking at uh, variation in terrorism in the world and not correlating it with changes. I mean, the Quran's been a, f a constant factor, as you've said. Well, so what? It is a constant factor, but that doesn't mean it's not an important factor. If you were to remove it, don't you think that that violence would go away? If you could magic away religion? Now, the next question is... I don't know. That's an empirical it's, claim. It's, it's not an empirical obvious to claim. Me that it's true. Now, the, ne the next point is the, is the nihilism, the negativity. Give up. Don't even try. Good luck to you. Religion's here to stay. You might as well just pack it in and die. Why do we have this negativity being, being, being thrown at us all the time? Maybe it is very difficult to get rid of religion, but is that a reason for not even trying? Is that a reason for wallowing in this sort of sentimental statements like, I believe in the human race and the human race believes in, 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 in God? Can't we grow out of that? Yeah, well, one other piece I would just like to add is that I keep saying, I don't know how many times I have to say this, the problem is dogma. The problem is not merely religion, it's dogma. And Stalinism, Pol Pot, all of these divisive political mythologies that, that, that mobilized people in, in the, in the hor horrendous ways that uh, you described, uh, these were dogmatic systems of belief. They were rigid ideologies. Stalinist, uh, Stalinism, you know, Stalin sent... Uh, biologists by the thousands to the gulag for not propping up Lysenko's biology. I mean, these were not kingdoms of reasonableness. Uh, and, and so the problem is dogma, and my, my only criticism of religion, really, is that it's the one area of discourse where dogma is allowed to thrive, systematically allowed to thrive, cannot be called dogma, cannot be uh, uh, jettisoned the way we jettison other political dogmas. Anti-Semitism is a bad thing, but believing that uh, only uh, Catholics get, get into heaven, it can't be said to be a bad thing, and that's, that's a problem for discourse. Uh, so, you know, I could have written a book called The End of Dogma. It would have had the same contents with perhaps a chapter on Stalinism. Uh, I, I, I fail to see how your... Then you, would, then you would have done the analysis in a much better way. No, well, no but not, not, not really. Be, because because, done, because the moment, because my book was a response to 9-11, and it's a, it's, it's a response to this particular moment where you, we can't even have this conversation, I think, rationally about the role that religion is playing in the world. Well, there are a lot of responses to 9-11, not, not all helpful. Well, that's not, that's not an argument. Well, okay, let's go back to the argument. Where if you had written a book on the end of dogma, you would, and, and you had not had a tendentious, preconceived notion of what you wanted to, to, to conclude, then you, you might have discovered something about, uh, about what the, the process of what happened in Cambodia uh, or, or Maoist China or Stalin's Russia ha a, a, or, or for that matter in, in Hitler's Europe uh, had in common or didn't have in common with, uh, with religiously motivated uh, 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 killings and massacres. I don't know what that, that would have been exactly. There happened to be a lot of social scientists working and historians working on that question, but they're working on an empirical way. Uh, you would also have had to deal with, with exceptions to the assertion you just made without evidence that it's always dogma. What is the dogma that caused uh, the, the Hutu to slaughter 800,000 uh, Tutsi? What's the dogma? What's the well, belief they, system? They Give have, me the list uh, of, of... Again, of, I'm, I'm not saying... There, there wasn't any. There well, was there just was. hatred. No, there, well, no there, was a, there was a lot of dogmatism in that, and I, I invite you to read a... Um, the book well, tell Machete me, tell Season. Me, well, tell me what the dogma was, because I obviously don't understand well, your there, definition okay, there, of dogma. There are other kinds of... of that, the, uh, that the Tutsi are bad? Okay, that they're okay, the problem we have, globally speaking, is 
uh, us them modes of thinking that really that's that the demonize outgroup I mean we have tribalism as a now problem. You're, now no, you're no, getting no, close now you're getting close to a serious understanding okay, uh, well, of this problem. Well, there's more than one cause of any effect I mean it's it, it, you're, Mel you're talking as, as though one were to say prove to me that all disease is due to viruses it's not some disease is due to bacteria we have religion we have dogma we have um, tribalism, we have all sorts of problems. Don't let's say that just because religion isn't always the problem, therefore it's not a problem. But you wouldn't like to get rid of all the bacteria in the human body. So what? I mean, that, um, so that, that's, that's because we analogy. understand that we can't live without bacteria. And we can't, we, we, and, and that bacteria I understand do that things we, for us. We and, cannot live right? without bacteria. We can perfectly well live without religion. You, you can. You described the experiment that proved that you can. You didn't respond to, to uh, the transcranial magnetic stimulation the way 80% of people do. There's variation in this. Well, okay. There's I mean, a genetic You're a pessimist and I'm an optimist, but let's at least try. And you don't, you don't respond. So variation. Let's at least try. And you don't, you don't respond. So, so that's great. And, and I, what, by the way, what I think is very valuable that you guys could do is get out there and find more people like yourselves or people in the in the middle ground who uh, uh, who actually need help uh, in in uh, in discovering that they don't have faith uh, because they've been uh, bamboozled by by uh, their upbringing or by the, the culture and I think that's I, th I suspect that you're already doing that and I think that's, that's exactly a very good good thing to do but that's not the way uh, um, I, I, uh, I read your books. Uh, your books are, are uh, not like Bertrand Russell's books, which, or, which are attempts to offer an alternative in a rational, calm way to, uh, to people who are starting to, to get glimmers of understanding of the, of the irrationality of faith. That's what you get from Russell. Uh, what, that's not what I get from you. Uh, do, do, quick, quick reply from both of you. Do, do, do you have any sense at all after having been here, done the tours, the book tours and so on, that a, a different strategy work, would have worked better, a, a kind of gentler strategy perhaps? Or well, I, I, I think it's very likely true that for um, actually converting religious people, I, ad I adopted completely the wrong strategy. For um, encouraging people who might have been on the fence, encouraging people who, as I believe there are enormous numbers of people who actually are non-religious but don't dare say so, I believe that we are um, showing the possibility of saying something where we're demonstrating that you can actually call a spade a spade and not get um, pilloried and persecuted for, for doing so. Well, I, I just want to make a kind of intermediate comment here because the assertion is made that the problem is is dogma. Well, if the problem is dogma and you want to kind of rectify this, you better get it straight what the dogma is, understand what the doctrine is first before you even come to the table to speak of it in a sense. So let me back up a minute and, mm -hmm. and say, um, well, when I was watching Mel's pictures and the Ten Commandments came up, it reminded me of a, of a comment, I think it was by Johnny Carson, during the Tammy Faye, Jimmy, Jim Baker thing, you remember? He had mm -hmm. an adulterous relationship with his secretary. And the joke was, well, he's, Jim Baker's standing there looking up to heaven. And he says, well, gosh, God, nine out of ten isn't bad. <laughs> so, the, but we read, immediately know why we don't respond well to that, and that's because nothing less than the fullness of morality is right to us. Uh, we all have some sense of what Professor Dawkins called the noble passions of the deep goodness, where, whatever its source may be. And we know that nothing less than the completeness of morality is going to answer the thing finally. And we know that we have a general term for that concept, and that's called love. So uh, I, I was talking with uh, Father Benedict Groeschel, who's the Director of Spiritual Development for the Archdiocese in New York, a few weeks ago. And, he was talking about the same kind of problems we, we are here, and he was saying to me, well, there's good religion and there's bad religion. He said, bad religion increases fear, and good religion increases love. And it strikes me that a lot of what is being talked about in this conference 
is a criticism of bad religion. And I, I, I've studied theology myself. After medical school, I studied theology for 10 years, partly because I was interested in, in pursuing the, the, the line of professional work I do, which is bioethics. And I want to understand what religion had to do with it, since it's so foundational. Um, and, and I did it also because I, I, my first child was born with brain damage, and I couldn't exercise my, my profession because of the problems within my household. But in the process, I learned to overcome a great many of the prejudices that I'm hearing spoken here. And I, I'm, look, I'm scientifically trained, and I agree with many of the negative things that have been said about religion here. Um, I, I think what's going on, though, is a terrible misrepresentation of, the, of both the realm of religion and, and what the real issue is. And I want to just, just I want to say one thing and then cite an example. I think the reason, one of the reasons we are seeing the rise of fundamentalism in America, which I decry, is because of, of a profound neglect of the deep roots of religion, of the deep issues of religion, of theology and philosophy that go into giving a strong foundation to religion. But I think the same thing is happening in this conversation, that, that uh, many of us here are just fundamentally ignorant of what the, the true doctrines are, the dogmas are. Now, then let me give you uh, one example. You've, uh, Sam and several people have echoed the same thought. You've repeatedly said that you've cited the notion that, and you've quoted the Bible correctly in saying there's no other name under which um, salvation can be found in the name of Christ. But when you know a little bit of history and you know a little bit of theology, you know that the name means the power and the purpose of a thing. It's obviously not Jesus, because in, in Aramaic, Jesus is something like Yeshua. Okay, so it's not the word, the sound of the word. It's the meaning of the word and the meaning of what the word stands for. And in Christian faith, that word stands for love, the fullness of the revelation of love. Now, you may not agree that Jesus was the fullness of the revelation of love. That, okay. But that's the doctrine. And it is absolutely wrong to say that, that what, what your quote was, only Catholics will get into heaven. That is absolutely wrong. There is a doctrine in the Catholic Church, and it's supported by all the major denominations, that there is such a thing as general grace. In fact, in the book of Romans, it, clearly, it says plainly, that which can be known about God is clearly perceived in the things that are made. Okay, and I, you, you're just wrong. Okay, and when well, you can make I address this? I mean, I get wait, the spirit wait, of your objection. You well, uh, can I just, uh, 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 Richard, this was not a comment on your uh, speech. Uh, we need to sort of wrap this up fairly quickly, Bill. I'm sorry, but so if, if Sam can respond and so on, and then we have to get. Uh,